I have to say that there, there was one question that was voted on that, that ranked fairly high, uh, and that was whether legalizing marijuana would improve uh, the economy <laughs> and job creation. And uh, uh, I don't know what this says about the online audience, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I, I just want... Uh, I don't want people to think that uh, this was a fairly popular question. We want to make sure that it was answered. Uh, the answer is no. I don't think that is a good strategy to grow our economy. President Barack Obama, formerly of the Chum Gang, uh, jo joking about <laughs> joking about marijuana legalization. Uh, Tony, one of the things that's great about the, your reporting, which I just want to plug for everyone, has been phenomenal on this, and everyone uh, should you. read it. They should also read uh, the reporting from Ryan Grimm and, and his great book. Uh, um, is that it's not that that we are in the process now of migrating from the let's say the Chum Gang and Doritos era to the the sort of industrialized era, the right. professional era. Um, what does that look like on the ground in these states? Uh, well, okay, so Colorado, which is where I focus most of my reporting, has the only for-profit marijuana market in the world currently, uh, from, from wholesale straight through to the stores with the retail model. You need a doctor's recommendation, easy to get. So it's basically what Washington State is going to set up only now. And uh, it's big brother. I mean, the regulations are incredibly tight. 280 pages of, of notes, uh, cameras in every room, uh, badges for every employee, uh, little uh, tags on every single plant. So you, like, you have to account for everything. Every leaf, every stem, there's no diversion. Uh, and, I, and I think if you did a cut and paste of the Colorado model uh, and, and put it in, into play in Washington State, you would have a pretty really good basis for uh, what many people think will be the future of, of marijuana legalization. But to your point, it, there is an interesting clash of cultures because all these big businesses that are now profiting in, in Colorado, all the talent is de facto talent developed under prohibition, right? So you have like, <laughs> right. the morning commute is guys in suits walking into buildings and right behind them is guys in sweatpants and like spiderweb pattern caps and you know, <laughs> Dorito dust on their fingers. Right, right. It's, right. it's stoners and, and investors side by side. And that will change eventually, but not for, not for the near term. Yeah. yeah, and what we've seen actually is that as, as recently as the 70s when we were sort of going on the path of decriminalization at that time as well, uh, the tobacco companies, we have evidence that they were actually interested in getting into this issue. There's a consultant's report to Brown and Williamson in mid-70s that said, you know, we have the fields to grow it, we have the tractors to roll it, we're, you know, we're ready to go. Um, uh, we have trademarks of marijuana that we could easily transfer to be legal trademarks if we have legalized marijuana. So I think this, I mean, there are a lot of scary things that have been said about marijuana. Some of it unjustified, and I'm not here to justify all those things that have been said, but some of them I think are justified. And one of them, you know, one of those issues is this issue of big industry. The idea that we're not going to have a tobacco industry targeting to kids that systematically lied for 80 years yeah. uh, to kids, and by the way, said that cigarettes are medicine and had doctors on, in their ads, which is a very interesting parallel. Or an alcohol industry. I mean, I worked in Washington. The alcohol industry is huge. They fight every tax increase mm -hmm. tooth and nail. Right. And so, and they downplay. Beer ads are good because they're meant to hook kids. Right. And the idea we're not going to have this for marijuana business. So, yeah. Well, I just think that I, I totally agree with you. And I think your earlier point about decriminalization is extremely important here because there is a huge economic impact to criminalization in terms of the number of people who are incarcerated, their impact on their abilities to get a job afterward. So, you know, I don't, I don't want to diminish that point. And, I, and it is a very tough issue. But I think if we look at it on the other side, you know, there's so much social science data that shows that one of the best ways to control behavior is to find ways to limit it out in the open. I mean, this is my point about cigarette smoking right. and its impact on reducing right. um, young people's taking up cigarettes. And so I just think we need to look at well, that too. Yeah, well, yeah, a piece I want to pick up on that Maya had mentioned is, you know, my con one concern I have is that the whole question about legalization or of marijuana can kind of overshadow the kind of sub-issues we're talking about. Like, because I think we, there is a lot of important issues about the over-criminalization of drug use and, and the effects that it has on and particularly people. particularly disproportionate effects it has on black and Latino young absolutely. men here in New York City, for no, instance. No, in I, California. I, absolutely. And, and, and dealing with, you know, the actual health issues, because cause, cause sometimes I think the debate is like, well, legalization, it's kind of like we were talking about earlier. It's like cutting taxes will solve all problems. Right. Legalization could solve all problems instead of really looking at right. It doesn't fit on a bumper sticker. The right. idea, we want to create this like a health issue, but we, we have cancer like a health issue. Would we, would we say if somebody has early stage cancer, like, oh, we're just going to give them a $100 fine and forget about it? No, we do an assessment. We look at if they actually have a health issue. So I think Wait, but, this, but the thing I think that's, that, that's key here, right, is that like we are going to, we're running the experiment now. I mean, that I think yeah. is... Yeah. The, it, right. the, I, right, we've had, been having this debate in the abstract. I mean, we're going to run this experiment. I and mean, one of the things here, I think two things. One is 
what I find fascinating about the Colorado thing is that it's as much a test of setting up a new regulatory regime as it is a test of legalizing marijuana and prohibition, right? I mean, the question is, is there going to be a huge black market that's going to emerge? Are you going to have, is this going to spiral out of control? Well, I actually think there will be, uh, and the tax projections in Washington State are really rosy, really, really. Those sound pretty, I got to say, I, mean, like, I did not like do a hard study, but $600 million a year sounds really high. Really tough mean, for and, me. And 25% at the retail end, um, I mean, if you're talking, right now, ounces are going for $250, $300. That's going to come down some, but even if it's $100, ounce at the store, a $25 tax? I mean, Canada had to repeal a cigarette tax that was $5 a pack in the 90s. Because of evasion. Because of evasion, right? You know, um, and, 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 and marijuana is already something that people know how to use on the black market. It's already a black market market. So uh, evasion is going to be widespread. I, I don't think it's going to be a, a tax winner. And, what, what, and so how, how are they attacking that problem? I mean, in Colorado, I mean, it sounds like th- that, that's why you call it a big brother regime, because they're, they're precisely f- afraid of that eventuality. Yes. I mean, they're, they're attacking it by there, there's zero room to operate outside of the purview of the, the, the law, of law enforcement. But it's important to note that none of the projections for the medical market in Colorado have been met. Uh, the revenue proje- projections. The, the Office of uh, Enforcement, in charge of regulating the industry, has not is underfunded. They had to ask for extra funds from the state to That's, pay for it. So there were, there were tax revenue projections when, the, when they were making the, the argument yeah, about when, medical marijuana. Right, right. The idea was, you know, we're going to have X number of, of, of customers, X number of stores, and these are going to be the fees, and we're going to pay for all these, um, you know, all you know, all these cars and everything, and it didn't work out. W- w- one of the things that's interesting is that the, one of the predictions, the medical marijuana, of course, was always, the, you know, was seen as the camel's nose under the tent, right? This was the first way of getting to it. Um, this is Barry McCaffrey in 1996 after California and Arizona legalized medical marijuana. Um, we're now going to see this come up all over the country, and this is not paranoia on my part. This is a national legalization of drug strategy. In other words, I see this not as two medical initiatives dealing with the terminal ill, I see this as part of the national effort to legalize drugs, starting with marijuana all exactly. over the United States. He's exactly right. He was exactly right. <laughs> now the question becomes, there's, there's the question of the effect in terms of the regulatory perspective and the, and the taxes, but I want to talk about what the social effect is going to be and what, what does this look like and what the consumption of the drug is going to look like, what normalizing it uh, might look like right after we take this break. 